Okay. So yeah, today we'll be talking about how to effectively give feedback to either your colleague, to your manager, or anyone in your team member. And also how, if you're on the receiving end, how do you receive constructive criticism to help you improve your work? And for, for this topic, we're going to look at, um, so this different things. So we're going to understand what feedback is in the first place, and then the different communication styles that our team members have. Everyone has a different communication style. And then we're going to see how do we plan and give an effective feedback and also how to receive and consider effective feedback. We'll also look at um, one of the frameworks to give feedback, which is called PATH. Um, yeah, I hope to also see your contribution uh, to this tutorial. So in as much as we give or we tend to give feedback to others, or sometimes we think in our workplace, feedback just has to come from your manager or your or someone who's above you. Um, but sometimes we, sh we also need to give ourselves feedback for, um, for the work that we've done or the processes that we've done. And I'm, I'm not sure, do you sometimes give yourself feedback on your work, um, on anything that you do? It could be writing it on a notebook or just sitting down at the end of the day thinking about the things you've done and what you could improve is it something that you do if it is just reaction a thumbs up yes Jabez, you give yourself feedback dc gives yourself feedback that's great um abraham also that's good um, it's a very important thing to not only depend on others for feedback, but also try and give yourself that feedback to see how you're doing, how you're improving. Uh, yeah, sometimes we think we're adequate, which um, may not sometimes be true, but uh, we should always just try and give ourselves feedback if we don't, if we don't already do it. <laughs> So the different communication styles in our place. So it's very important to understand that different people um, have different uh, communication styles and it's all about the personality and just how the person is in general. And for you to ensure there's effective communication or feedback, it's good to understand the type of communication style that your, your team members have. So there are four different communication styles. And the first one is a passive communicator. And this, a passive communicator basically doesn't always speak up too much. They're always just like ready to, very happy to just go with the flow of others and support others when, and support the need of others. They, they don't usually confront and yeah they sometimes come off as submissive and so in a situation where your team member is a passive communicator how do you like uh, support a passive communicator in a workplace because it's important to also get their ideas and how how to improve a project um so sometimes the passive communicators tend to be uncomfortable or like uh, socially anxious and so sometimes how you can help is maybe just give an outline of how and where your team is going to communicate so include like tools which you're going to use um, and yeah so just try and encourage them to like speak up more and share their uh, ideas because it's it's very important the second one is an aggressive communicator so this one is a very confident person sometimes they tend to be overly confident to the point where they don't want to listen to others opinions I, I don't know if you've met this type of people in different workplaces 
and sometimes when yeah so sometimes they come off as if um they're not supported because they feel like people don't listen to them and they can naturally just cause a team member to react uh defensively because uh because of just how they communicate and that so if 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 you communicate aggressively your team member will definitely react in a defensive way which may make you feel which may make an aggressive communicator feel unsupported in in one way or another so uh one of just the examples is they can they often tend to interject ideas so they be like ah oh, you're wrong you don't get it things like that so it's it's not recommended to be an aggressive communicator uh, yeah so how it also helps to clarify the it also helps to clarify the different roles that each project team member is playing and yeah so things like who's responsible for this kind of work who's the person overseeing this or what what are we doing things like that it's important to like clarify all those things so that an aggressive communicator can understand what the project is about and yeah so they can also feel supported and then we have a third uh communicator who's like a passive aggressive communicator and this is someone who doesn't feel comfortable saying exactly what they mean um so sometimes they tend to doubt themselves or doubt their ideas or they feel like oh this is not really a good idea or um it's this is a very common thing everyone knows it so why would i say it why would i say it? um and i think yeah so the way you can help a passive a aggressive communicator is make time for team building and in that way um in that way they they start to feel more open to exp more open and stay and safe uh, and safe to express their own ideas uh the best communication style in our place is an assertive communicator and this person uh they know how to stand up for themselves they know exactly how to communicate and advocate for what they want not in an aggressive manner but in an effective way um so they also use hand gestures and they have like very happy facial expressions and they try to share in as much as how they feel in a very productive way so this also shows it's also uh, influenced by them having like a high um self-esteem and this is uh a communication style that everyone needs to like try and practice to um yeah to try and practice to be in our place um so the next so after going through all the different communication styles i hope you can just just from the descriptions you can try and see which kind of communication style you are um if you if you if you if you've already figured it out please feel free to share it on the chat and just say um this is my communication style i think this is me i think this is me uh yeah just feel free to share if you feel free so after talking about the different communication styles it's important for us to understand exactly what feedback is especially in our workplace so just a, a normal description of feedback it's basically just a response to something it could be uh, you're responding to someone or you're responding or you're giving feedback to a process that has been made or a different product for a company or a different service that has been offered so it's just a response to how that thing is doing um, and in our place, it could be between employees or managers or stakeholders, even to customers as well, or from, and it could be uh, 360 ways, so from employee to manager, manager to employee, employer to stakeholder, etc. 
Um, so feedback is important because it provides like response to how something was done. So it could be you're evaluating how um, someone did their work or how they performed or the different products or just different um, workplace dynamics. And feedback is also a very important tool to improve the performance of the team as well. So when we also talk about feedback, there are different types of feedback. Uh, so it's, it's important to spread constructive feedback and try as much as not to spread um, negativity in our workplace. So the first type of feedback is a positive feedback. So this is when you're like, when you've done your work well and your manager or your boss tells you, or they express some satisfaction in your work and encourage you or motivate you to continue doing the same thing. That's a positive feedback. And it always makes us feel very happy and good about ourselves. Um, the other type of feedback is a negative feedback. And it's sometimes also known as, in our place, it's known as constructive criticism. And it's it points out what could be improved or changed to your work. So sometimes this negative feedback can make us feel as if we're insufficient or it makes us feel, um, it doesn't, it's not good because we feel like uh, we've done all these things, but uh, they didn't, my manager didn't like the work that I did. So uh, that's a negative feedback and we're going to see how to react to it and also how to give it effectively so as to avoid hurting uh, your team members uh, feelings. Uh, another type of feedback is a suggestion which is basically just proposing something to be done differently. Um, so yeah it could be you're suggesting uh, a different tool to be used and then there's also an evaluation which is basically an assessment of how performance was done. So it always like ranges on a scale of uh, one to something or it always has KPIs, uh, but basically it's also a type of feedback. And then we have a reaction. This could be maybe a facial reaction or yeah. So just expression of how one feels about something. And then there's a request, which is a polite way to ask um, something to be done different. So those are the types of feedback in our workplace. Um, so this type of feedback can come out differently uh, in our workplace. So for example, when we're when evaluating performance, this is basically just focusing on how individual, it focuses mostly on the goals that were set or the, the different KPIs and also how well someone achieved them. So sometimes when you present your project, you have to be evaluated, okay, you did well, you could improve here or here. And then, so if, yeah, it depends. If you did well, that's good. If it wasn't satisfactory, we have the improving processes bit of it. And this is a feedback to improve the different processes. And it mostly involves things like suggesting uh, how things can be done differently or suggesting how you can improve something, a project, or just basically insights that can enhance your work procedure or standards. And then there's open communication. And this is basically where people just come together and just freely and maybe socially, informally, just talk about, um, uh, they talk about just a different thing. It could be a project. So things like, how do you feel about this project? Everyone contributes about it. And in open communication, it's, it's, always, um, it's always a very, it's an it's an honest dialogue and it encourages transparent transparency in our place just to ensure that everyone is on the same page 
and then we have the motivation and growth this is where your manager just encourages you and inspires you to like be the best uh, of yourself uh, yeah and also they one another thing with motivation is they always try to focus on your strength and tell you to improve more on that and then they show you like the potential you can have and then problem solving feedback um, basically just helps to identify and address the different challenges and maybe offer solutions or just alternative perspectives to a certain project and then there's a 360 degree feedback and this is basically uh, so a 360 degree feedback is when you encourage uh, input from everyone in your team. Uh, this includes maybe your teammates, whether it's the subordinates or even your leaders. So it's um, it's all well-rounded. So it's mostly, it could be an employee giving feedback to a manager, how they manage the project, or it could be uh, from manager to uh, manager to employee and that sort of thing so mostly it always seems as if just a manager is the one who's supposed to give you feedback but there are some times when you also need to like manage your manager in a way so that involves you giving feedback about how they manage the team and how effective it was and it's always encouraged that you give feedback also to your to your leaders and then there's customer and stakeholder this is basically you delivered work to a customer and then they give you feedback and yeah just their satisfaction on the products or services you you delivered um so let's let's also look at the path technique so this is a technique that um it's an approach that helps you uh, give effective feedback and it, in, it includes three things. So you look at the performance of someone and then you analyze the performance and then give feedback. And it's a very valuable technique for managers and coaches mostly. And it's the, the thing with path technique is you know how sometimes you give someone feedback and they feel bad about how you give them feedback so puff really and so after you give them negative feedback and they feel some certain type of way um it's a workplace and remember you have to be there on a day-to-day -day basis and that means um there will be no cohesion between the manager and the employee. So you'll start to feel some different kinds of tension in between where the employee would not feel free to express themselves uh, the next time. So this is a really good technique because it emphasizes on how to, in as much as you're giving feedback, you're also looking at the relationship between the team members or yeah, you're looking at the a relationship between between the team members or between also the manager just to ensure no one feels hurt so the path technique starts by looking at performance and you just basically look at the performance of what you what someone has done and then the first thing to do is to praise them for just for the effort they took to do that work or just basically if they were enthusiastic and then they did something very completely opposite, still give them, uh, just appreciate the efforts that they took. Remember, we're all humans and we get really, um, we're very sensitive to words. So the first thing is to just appreciate the effort they took and just the work they did, even if it was not satisfactory, just make sure you praise them and say, thank you for the effort that you did. Uh, etc. So, and then the second step after, after yeah, after appreciating the effort, you analyze the situation objectively. So that means you look at the exact things that they did, 
and then you identify the specific issues that need addressing and yeah so the steps helps you to clarify what to focus on so before you just give feedback take a step back and analyze just how the performance was done and then yeah so yeah this help helps you clarify what to focus on when giving feedback so analyze the situation and then provide constructive feedback so on this you use very precise and uh use precise language also employ empathy when uh when communicating feedback so if the work was good uh you can start by praising and then comment on the specific things on analysis comment on the specific things that they did well so uh i like how you wrote um uh, this code for this you're optimizing this process keep it up if it wasn't good you're like i i appreciate the effort that you did i like also just uh choose the specific things that you thought were good in the project and then use the precise languages to communicate so um we're going to look at how uh just some extra tips to to do so yeah when when giving feedback so uh after I, yeah so just use precise language and communicate your observations and recommendation based on the results that were given and then also have some confidence in your conclusion and avoid any kind of bias remember it's a workplace um so when you're when you're giving feedback you can use this uh three step st structure so something I would like you to start doing is or something I would like you to stop or something I'd like you to continue doing is this and this and that um, so yeah if the performance was depending on how the performance was um, yeah and also encourage and keep the idea that feedback is a gift and it's meant to like improve your work um, the other thing in this is basically for managers so if you're uh so the second one is like feed forward so instead of dwelling on the past or the negative things that your teammates did on a certain project um focus on how you can improve that instead of thinking of oh you messed up this operations we lost this amount of money etc you can just start of thinking how can we make this differently because dwelling on the past won't change a thing but uh taking the necessary steps to improve or what you can do next differently is actually the key step to uh, moving forward so avoid uh reminding your employees the negative things that they kept that they kept um uh, saying or maybe your teammates and then uh have one-on-ones regularly just to uh, discuss feedback and then make sure you you've created a safe space or an open dialogue for growth remember the are people you'll be seeing or communicating to every single day as long as you're working so you have to ensure that um your correlation between all of them is always um always good so that is how to give feedback uh what happens when you're on the receiving end of feedback so you could either be receiving good news or bad news so if it's the negative one how how do you handle how do you like process it um yeah so sometimes if so this is basically we're going to talk about um handling negative criticism in our place because uh, i think handling positive is good you just feel good about yourself but handling uh criticism can sometimes spark um, some negative emotions in you and it's important for you to learn how to manage that and yeah and continue effectively so yeah it's always difficult but it's it's very necessary for an employee so the first thing to use so you have to use that criticism to improve your work 
So you need to first learn how to listen and then um, understand. So the first thing is learn how to listen to feedback. And then the second thing is to understand the kind of feedback that you're given and then you apply the the different situ the different uh, suggestions. Um, so we talked about how getting critique from uh, from someone can make you feel uh, a certain type of way. And how do you now handle or just change the way you feel about criticism? And it's going to help you, like in future, when you when you're given a negative feedback, you'll know um, you'll know you'll know exactly how to handle it and not take it personally. So, um, so the first thing to do is to first control your reaction. Um, be very aware about how you react to things. So uh when you're if if it makes you angry if it, if it makes you sad just control uh how you react to it so uh this means uh maybe talking back to your manager in a rude way or um just behaving in a not professional way try and ensure you show your maturity in the workplace so um yeah so how to basically handle criticism or just how to change the way you feel about um, criticism is to think of the best uh, think of the best of the critic so when a coworker or a supervisor gives you feedback think of it as a favor they're just doing for you so the it, it just shows that the person was interested enough to take time to help you grow and improve in your chosen field um, so yeah, think of it, think of the best of criticism. So look at it as if they're trying to help you and not that they hate you and they want you to uh, fail or something of the sort. And then also self-awareness. So understanding, understand yourself and understand that when you're given a negative critic, you might start being very defensive in the first place. Uh, in the first time and defensiveness is very natural it's very human you may feel hurt by critical comments but you have to be aware and give yourself some time to move past that um, so if it's yeah and um, then when to yeah the other thing is to listen carefully to the critique that you're being given so uh remember that um, active listening means paying attention and also processing so not using the time while other person is talking to prepare your uh your response mentally so if you don't understand something it's always good to ask for clarification the other thing is to respect um, negative criticism uh, rather than seeing positive feedback and constructive criticism as opposites, uh, learn to see them as equals. So it's they're both feedbacks. So positive or negative, they're both feedbacks and they're meant to just help you grow and be the best version of yourself. And then also the last thing is to learn. Um, so even though you may feel like you're losing confidence, or credibility um, don't lose sight of the lesson so uh, yeah if someone yeah so and always know that there is a lesson behind um, every critique or feedback so learn to understand that criticism is uh, just a it's it's a lesson in a way so try and change how you feel about negative criticism see have a positive um, view to it uh yeah we missed the slide so um how to handle criticism so when you're given a critique how how are you going to handle it so we've talked about it uh in a way 
but um, basically just control your reaction. Uh, uh, so your reaction can be taken as an indicator of maturity or professionalism. And then try not to take it personally. It's not about you. It's about the work and the project. Um, so take also some time to process the criticism and avoid the excuses and defending yourself. Um, yeah, but try, yeah, process the criticism, take it and process it well and don't be defensive or make a lot of excuses for it and then the other thing is to give yourself some some grace uh, appreciate the effort you put into it understand that you can be insufficient at some times at times but also give yourself some grace and understand that you no matter how much or how much you you're good at your job or how much experience you have there's still always more to learn and yeah uh, also show appreciation to the person giving you the critique and yeah be and then don't dwell on the criticism so much and yeah also apologize for the inconvenience you've caused um, so yeah, that's basically all you need to know about receiving and handling feedback in a workplace. So um, on our interactive part of the lesson is we have two scenarios and I'd like us to like do a small role play and just practice how we can give um, feedback to our teammates and our manager. So the first scenario is um, you have a team member, Sarah, who has been in the company for a lot of years and has shown great potential in her work. But recently, there's a decline in her performance and lack of attention to detail, resulting in errors in her work. How would you communicate um, as a as a team member how would you communicate uh, how would you communicate to Sarah any volunteer if no volunteer I, I'll just have to pick someone. Uh, maybe just some pointers is uh, you could try and understand um, maybe Sarah's performance is not work related, but also it could be something in her personal life. Um, so try and show empathy and understand exactly the situation before you give feedback. Um, Erosalem, do you want to take this? Um, the Roger, do you want to take the first scenario? Grace? Yes. Um, how would you uh, effectively give feedback to Sarah on on that scenario? Uh, I think, like you said, I would try understand what is happening. Probably there's some issue with her family or something like that. And then, uh, if there's something happening, maybe show empathy and let her know it's affecting the work and maybe try guide her. Maybe she can go seek counseling. If there is nothing happening, uh, tell her to improve on her performance and tell her that of late there's something happening with her work. She needs to improve. Yeah. Okay, thanks. 
Um, so from the path feedback model, I think you missed the part where you have to, even though her work was not like really good, at least appreciate the small bits that she did first before telling her to improve the work. But yeah, that's good. Uh, so the second scenario is on, um, it's like uh, giving feedback to your manager, which can be uh, very tough at times. So if you're a team lead and you're managing a project with a tight deadline and then Okay, thanks, thanks, Shamil. Uh, thanks, thanks. Yeah, that's good. I think you yeah appreciate her work and then get to know the reason better and the root cause. That's great. And then, yeah, so let's move to the second scenario where uh, you're, a t you're a manager and you've been managing a project with a tight deadline and then one of your team members tells you that your management style uh, is not good specifically um, like you were not clear about the group's objectives and then you rarely communicated feedback to the teamwork so um, if yeah how would you how would you like handle how would you like communicate back to robert as a manager anyone wants to take this Mr. So in my connection was uh, bad for a while. I didn't hear you. Can you repeat? Um, so can you see the second scenario on the screen? Uh, yes, I bought that. Yeah, so imagine you're the team lead and then one of your members tells you that you were not clear about the objectives of the group and you didn't communicate regularly to the team. How would you, as the manager, uh, give reply to Robert? So while you think about it, um, Shamil says the best thing here is not only giving feedback, but also coming up with better ways with the plan and also I, yeah, that's great. And also understanding as a manager of a team, uh, the wrongs that you did or where you were not uh, clear. Uh, so sometimes some managers can can feel bad about uh, subordinates telling them how to do their work. But as a good manager, you have to appreciate uh, Robert's uh, effort in trying to like uh, give you feedback in the first place. And then also, yeah, like Shamil said here, think about how you're going to be better in the next time. And yeah. Same here, asking more clarifying questions to understand more in the course. Yeah, that's great. Um, Mr. Have you thought about something yet? Okay, maybe her network is bad. But yeah, that's basically it. So let's quickly let the uh, apologize first. Uh huh. Appreciate the feedback. Good. And then give myself feedback on the concern. And if the concern is true, call the team and make things clear. Yeah, I think that's a very effective way of um, communicating. Really good. Uh, yeah, so let's quickly look at the 
challenge for this week. Um, I'm not going to read through it because it's a lot, um, but just a brief description. Um, so it's on feedback delivery and yeah, so you're given, you're a team leader and then you have a project and then in the project things keep going wrong with the team. Uh, so you have to see or find a way to effectively communicate to either to the different teams involved. Um, yeah, so there are many, you're given more details on the team's concern, the project overview, and the different milestones and timelines. And then from that, your task is to communicate um, communicate back so either through slack and email and also to like yeah the senior management so all these responses would be yeah should be on 10 on slides uh maximum of 10 ppt and then convert it to pdf and submit it on 10x so deadline is on 15th saturday uh yeah, if anything is unclear about the exercise, feel free to reach reach out to me on Slack. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, I think if you go through the document and read it, you'll understand. So there's no need for me to reread it again. Um, so everyone has access to, does everyone have access to uh, to both documents? Just a thumbs up. Okay. Um, um, give and receive effective feedback in our workplaces. Um, thanks for being here, and I wish you all the best with your work. Have a good day.